Please hurry, we need an ambulance right away. <laughs> this is a big moment in the season. If you've been paying close attention, you might have a suspicion that uh, that Ben might not be what he says he is. He doesn't want to fang out. He decides he has to in order to save Jason because he sees what it's doing to Sookie. We like to keep things interesting and keep things surprising. You'll get to see a side of someone who's been vilified uh, pretty unilaterally throughout uh, the past season. So it adds a little wrinkle to things when we find that there, there may be another side to the story. You spared me. Yes. I did. If he is, in fact, the cold-hearted killer who killed Sookie's parents, uh, then you would expect him to have just shredded Jason and shredded Nile, for that matter. Sookie has a plan from about, from pretty much the point when she discovers who Ben is. She decides she's going to do this on her own, and she's got uh, she's got a plan. And I don't think the audience uh, entirely knows what she's up to until we get to the very end. For a moment, you think maybe she's actually falling for him, and there may be a piece of Sookie that might be a little bit attracted to this guy. She is uh, attracted to danger and uh, all sorts of. Uh, men who are not appropriate for her, so why not, uh, why not Warlow in this case? But uh, just when you think that she has completely lost her senses, there comes the light bulb. Get the fuck off me or die, Warlow. Girls got ID? Crap, we forgot it at home, but we're totally 21. <clears throat> 27. There was something fun about seeing the clerk who was in the second scene of the entire series. The world is still going on. This convenience store has still been in business, and this guy is still at work. Not forget to ever so. Okay. For Jessica, it's a difficult moment. She recognizes what happened to her when she was 17. Um, her life was uh, was irrevocably altered uh, through no doing of her own, and she is now playing part in doing this to four girls that are the same age. Jessica is so worried about uh, about Bill, she's lost sight of the fact that she's a vampire too, and she might actually be the one who is unable to control herself. Here, she discovers that there is a part of her that is no longer human, that completely takes over uh, when the instinct of a vampire come out. You smell like honey. She's confronted not only with the obvious problem in front of her, but also with the notion that she isn't who she thought she was anymore. I was so worried it was gonna be you and it was me. How are you feeling? Excited. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. This is not the end. Willa hates what her father is doing. She thinks there may be a better life uh, on the other side of it. That doesn't mean she isn't scared, she isn't terrified while it's happening, but there's something very alluring about Eric and about vampirism. These are desperate times, and Eric doesn't take the decision lightly, but he realizes that uh, the best move in this situation may be to take the one thing that means anything at all to the governor. Why did you choose me? That doesn't mean he is necessarily using Willa as a pawn. He sees something in her. He thinks she would make a good vampire. Prove to your father that you're not a monster. He's throwing a Hail Mary at this point uh, because uh, um, the end is uh, is pretty near for all vampires if he doesn't do something desperate. As your maker, I command you, go home to your father. 